Now CNN's Anderson Cooper on assignment for 60 Minutes. There's no animal that we fear more and understand less than the great white shark, in part because it's so hard to get near to them, studying great whites hasn't been easy. But there is one man who has spent his life getting closer to great whites more often than anyone else. His name is Mike Rudson, and in South Africa, where he lives, he's known simply as the Shark Man. What he's discovered about these predators will surprise you. Far from being mindless killing machines, Rudson believes great whites are smart, curious, and not out to kill humans. And as we reported back in 2009, he's willing to risk his life to prove it. The story will continue in a moment. Mike Rutson is looking for a great white shark he can swim with. That's right, swim with. Before he gets in the water, he needs to find a great white that's both calm and curious, a shark he refers to as a player. That's a player. What's a player? Well, a player is basically the shark that's so relaxed, has a nice personality, woke up on the right side of the reef. And on the right side of the reef. <laughs> yeah. Um, and the animal's willing to interact with us. It's so curious. Rudson says great whites have personalities. They may be the top predator in the sea, but he says they are not the man-eating killers of our nightmares. Now, how, how can you tell that's a player? Look how she's moving. She's checking everything out. Check now slowly. She's going to do this. See how she looks at everything. Wow, yeah, yeah. It's moving and very it's slowly moving around the boat. Very slowly. Check, he's going to come and watch the motor now. That's what you want. So this is a curious shark. You, you can work with this shark. This is a player. This shark and several others have been attracted to Rutson's boat by chum, a mixture of bait and fish blood. It's believed great whites can smell a single drop of blood from a hundred yards away. My camera. Now that he's found a player, Rutzen and his cameraman, Mornay Hardenberg, suit up and prepare to do the unthinkable, plunge into bloody water with great white sharks all around. There's no universities to teach you what these animal social dynamics are and social behavior is. And the only way to find that out is by getting into the water. Immediately, a curious great white comes straight at Rutzen. His only protection, his camera. Rudson has figured out that great whites don't like the feel of metal. Good visibility is crucial. The sharks are constantly circling, and Rudson has to continually turn around so they don't sneak up on him. They are extremely inquisitive creatures. I like to say they're like little kids in a toy store, and you just tell them, don't touch. Observe, they'll touch. The problem is, when, when they get curious, they, they sometimes bite. Yes, the animals are not trying to actively kill you, they're trying to outwit you. There's a difference. And you're trying to outwit them again. So there's a mental battle going on, or a mental game being played between you and the shark? I believe so, yes. I and mean, that seems like the ultimate test of putting your life on the line. I would like to think that it's the ultimate trust between the animal and myself. Rutzen is not a scientist. He was born on a farm and knew nothing about sharks until 20 years ago, when he began working as a fisherman along this rugged coast near Cape Town. These waters are home to the world's highest concentration of great whites. This is the hotspot in the world for great whites. A perfect hotspot because it's an ideal feeding ground for great whites. It's not far from the southern tip of Africa where the Atlantic and Indian Oceans meet. The water is rich in nutrients, which attract whales, huge shoals of fish, and seals, some 60,000 of them. Seals are a prime target for great whites. Early one morning, Rutzen takes us to an area called Shark Alley. The seals pass through here, searching for food. There are plenty of fish in the sea. Why, why are the sharks so interested in the seal? The reason for that is the blubber. Marine mammals have a blubber layer, and that blubber, whoa! Big shark. <laughs> that blubber layer is extremely energy rich. Whoa! Oh my God! <laughs> That's Whoa. what we're talking about. The sharks leap straight out of the water, stunning the seals before devouring them. Seals are mammals. They're quick, agile, and smart. But as Rutzen has learned, they're no match for the power, speed, and intelligence of the great whites. They have to outsmart the seal. They 
if they weren't as smart or smarter than a seal, they wouldn't have eaten them. Watching great whites hunt has become a big business in this part of South Africa. Each year, tens of thousands of tourists flock to the town of Hansbai. They're offered a close encounter with great whites from the safety of an underwater cage. That was, that was really something. Rutzen started his own dive operation 15 years ago. It began as a business, but it's become a mission, an effort to learn about great whites and dispel the myths surrounding them. I think that humans like to fear these animals and not understand these animals. Each year, as many as 70 million sharks are slaughtered to make shark fin soup, a delicacy in Asia. This undercover footage shows how fins are cut off while the sharks are still alive. Their bodies are thrown back into the sea. If people can just see these animals for what they really are, I'll be happy because then they have a chance of survival. By diving without a cage with the sharks, Rutzen is trying to show that there are a lot more complex animals than previously thought. After every dive, he spends hours reviewing his material, trying to make sense of how the sharks interact with him. What are you doing with your body here? The smaller you make your body, the lesser threat you are, and then the animals should come closer. The bigger you are, the more threatening you are. Rutzen believes that the great white is extremely selective about what it eats, and insists he is not on their menu as long as he stays calm and shows the shark that he has no fear. So it's important to stand your ground. The most important thing is don't chase the animals, don't run away from the animals, stand your ground and keep eye contact with the animal. Make eye contact with Make eye contact. It's not like a primate. If you're looking at it, it's already lost the element of surprise. Wow, look at this. Oh, I see. That you don't see every day. What? You see the <laughs> oh eye? Oh my God. People like to think it's this evil black eye of this great white. The eyes are actually the color of the bluer sea. It's beautiful. You like blue-eyed blondes? There's a blue eye that you can't match. <laughs> I hope you've never complimented a woman by telling her she had eyes as pretty as a great white <laughs> no, shark. not yet. Great whites have been around for millions of years, but they've never been seen mating or giving birth. Their senses are highly developed, but when it comes to touch, Rutzen believes they often rely on their mouths. So it just uses its mouth to feel you, but that yeah. ends up being, could be a deadly yeah. bite. Touch is a very important sense for a living animal. So why shouldn't they use that sense? Rutzen believes most attacks by great whites on humans have been the result of curiosity, not deliberate acts of aggression. Worldwide, there are only about five deadly shark attacks each year, a tiny amount considering the millions of people who swim in the ocean. Rutzen says many of us have likely had a positive encounter with a shark without even knowing it. What do you mean by a positive encounter? It's where the animal comes to look at you, sees you're not food, it's not what you're hunting, maybe very curious in what you're doing, look at you for a while and then move off again. You never know the animal's there, but the animal knows you're there. And that should tell people what? It would tell the people that these animals are not out to get us. They're not in our oceans to kill humans. Rutzen doesn't take tourist diving with sharks without a cage. But we've dived together before, and he offers to take me for an up-close look at the great whites. No cage, no protection. On a perfect, calm morning, we head to Shark Alley. We drop anchor, and the chumming begins. It doesn't take long for the sharks to arrive. I'm reminded of the line in the movie Jaws, I think we're going to need a bigger boat. The fact we have a paramedic on board and an ambulance waiting on shore isn't exactly reassuring. They've been chumming the water for about 40 minutes now, and there's about four or five great whites circling the boat, searching for food. There's one in the water right there as we speak. So it's time to start the dive. Mike Rudson says the most important thing to remember when you're actually underwater with the great whites is to remain calm. It's easier said than done. Project confidence. That's what Mike Rutzen recommends. I'm not exactly sure how to do that underwater with a wetsuit. Rutzen and cameraman Mornay Hardenberg have been doing this so long, they're relaxed. My pulse is already high. Okay, how do you feel? Feel good. 
for good. Good may be an overstatement. Just remember, if I get eaten, just keep rolling. Because the only thing more stupid than being eaten would be to be eaten and not have it videotaped. Rutzen believes the sharks now circling the boat are players, curious and not too aggressive. It's an odd sensation knowing that you're about to jump into blood-filled, shark-infested water. Rutzen goes first, then I take the plunge. Immediately, a 15-foot great white swims straight toward us. Their size and power is awesome. They don't attack, but they want to see what we are and circle us constantly. Up close, you see their razor-sharp teeth and the strength of their bodies. It's terrifying but thrilling to be so close to such a massive predator. Seeing them in their own environment, not grabbing at bait or lunging at seals, gives me a new impression of them. A more complex picture, and that is exactly what Mike Rutzen is hoping for. The current is getting stronger and visibility is deteriorating. So we decide it's time to surface. It's just unbelievable. It's terrifying and at the same time just exhilarating. And it's unlike anything else. Wow. In it. And I'm so happy I'm back up. I was very happy. Thank you. That's incredible. I'm glad I did it, but I'm not sure I'd do it again. As for Mike Rutzen, he continues to push the boundaries. He sometimes even hitches rides on the dorsal fins of great whites. These interactions are stunning, but Rutzen insists he's not being reckless. The more we work with him, the more careful we are because of the knowledge. It's not that we're getting complacent because we have done it so many times. You're we're more getting... careful with them now than you were when you started. Yes, because we are learning small things of what makes them tick. So we are so careful not to do the wrong thing. You did say before, though, when we talked that, you know, you expect to die at a young age. Yeah, well, <laughs> look at my lifestyle. I smoke too much, I drink too much, and I drive my car very fast. <laughs> but you, so you don't expect to die from a great white? No, no. Go to 60MinutesOvertime.com to watch the next in our summer series of Correspondent Favorites, sponsored by Pfizer.